Welcome back to Tiny Grimes Games, and I'm here with another Legends of Ruterra video. And today, I want to present to you a deck that can get you to Diamond. I I'm of the opinion, basically, that anyone can get to Diamond that wants to with Legends of Ruterra. The question is simply, do you want to do it? Do you have the drive to do it? Do you have the time to do it? Um, because it's not a deck that is going to win you every game. That's not what this video is about. It's about presenting a deck that can play enough games rapidly enough at a high enough win rate to be able to grind you through. Um, I had a very easy time getting through the lower levels with the deck. Uh, Platinum was a little more challenging. There, it was interesting. I would win like five in a row at Platinum and then lose you know, three out of five and kind of do this back and forth grind through Platinum. Um, but I did finish my run today to Diamond. And so I do want to say this, though. It's an interesting question of do you want to actually burn your way to Diamond faster? Um, it does definitely take skill. I'm not trying to say it's a low skill deck. What it does do, though, is it doesn't educate you on how to play against late game decks because you don't have to deal with their late game effects. So it's only giving you like a partial picture of what Runeterra looks like. And so the question is, do you want to sort of be an overrated diamond player? Or would you rather be a player who is more playing at the level you should be at based on your knowledge of the game? I really had to wrestle with myself of this. Like at first I was like, I don't mind. I was playing decks, losing, winning, whatever. Um, but at a certain point, that competitive part of me kicked in and was kind of like, you need to at least be diamond. Like this is getting to be absurd. Um, but then also I sort of, I don't know if I rationalized it to myself or just decided that getting to Diamond and then really taking on the game in its fullness was a better way for me to be able to experience it at a higher level, right? Like, I was thinking, like, is there any point in, like, trying to master the game at gold when I'm not even really playing against the highest level competition anyway? I might as well get to that spot and then know that I'm going to take my lumps, right? Like, I'm not going to play Burn anymore for a while. I've decided I'm going to play mostly Demacia and Karina Control, and see how that works out. All right, that's a little little uh, intro. Basically, the Burn deck is a very effective deck. Let's look at what makes it so effective. What you're doing, really, is playing early stuff. You want a one-drop, period. You want to go first with a one-drop, but you need a one-drop. Even if you have four decent two-drops, I would suggest dropping two to three of them to try to get a one drop uh your best one drop is usually this one the precious pet the reason being that other one drops cannot block it uh i don't know the card pool well enough to make it a definitive statement like there is no one drop that can block it but there are none that i can think of off the top of my head um legion rear guard is another great one drop because it puts a ton of pressure on them but it does get blocked and killed by a lot of other one drops and saboteur um, I like a little bit less as my opening one drop simply because it also has light game abilities as well by being able to just push through that one more damage. And you're going to see with the burn deck, what you're constantly doing is making the calculation of how do I get exaxes, right? You're never like, I got a million damage. It's like, I got 23 exactly, which is what I needed because my opponent healed for three. All right. Uh, those are the one drops. The best two drop is probably this guy, the Boom Crew Rookie. Uh, because he's doing two just by attacking that goes on the stack, it doesn't matter what happens after that. And usually you're going to get two attacks out of this person. It's one of the one of the things you most want to do is figure out how to get two damage out of the Boom Crew Rookie. Uh, the Crimson Disciple is a really interesting one because she's either like your best two drop and does tons of damage or does like nothing because your opponent knows this, right? So as soon as they are going to try to craft a turn once you put this out to work around her. So like if you try to self damage her, they're probably going to immediately react with some sort of removal. So you just have to know that about the Crimson Disciple that oftentimes she acts as, um, as, as a distraction rather than the main event. Uh, Imperial Demolitionist is another amazing card. Deal one to an ally deal two to the nexus what you're going to find out a ton of the time is that they will remove the thing that you're doing the one damage to so you have to be very careful like not only does it not make sense usually to do one damage to a precious pet to get that two 
But you'll find oftentimes that it won't happen. Um, most decks have a way to do one damage to something. They are aware that you have this effect and they will time things accordingly. So one of the things you're going to find to be most important with the burn deck, like you're going to win maybe 50% of your games just because you're playing the burn deck and they, your opponent's just not set up to be able to win that. And then you're going to lose like 40% of the games because your opponent is set up to be able to handle the burn deck. So there's only like this 10% window. But in that window, the way you end up outplaying your opponent is by how you situate the stack, how you figure out when to do your damage. Like, do you just do this two damage at the beginning of the turn, hoping your opponent doesn't have a way to remove it? Do you try to bait your opponent into using their mana so there are less spells that can interact with this or, or theoretically no spells? That ends up being a lot of how you win those 10% of the games is how you interact with that. This guy is bananas. Um, he is almost certainly doing two no matter what because he gets it when he dies. You can often get more than that or you can make a great trade. Uh, Mystic Shot is just a great two damage. One of the least impactful cards because it's only two, but still it's two. Um, Transfusion I found to be... One of the hardest cards to play. Now the, now, the easiest spot, of course, is you've got uh, a Crimson Disciple. You damage a Disciple. You do two damage to them. You put the plus two, plus two on an unblocked thing, and voila, you just did a million damage. It almost never works out that way, and I find that Transfusion ends up being really difficult to use, and when you top deck it, when you need a damage spell at the end, it's brutal. It's just one of these spells that I wonder if it's even the right fit for this deck. Like, it's super close to being the right deck. I mean, the right fit. And when you use it perfectly, it feels great. But like I said, your opponents are often ready for this sort of thing. So it's very risky to deal one damage to something with one health. There are too many things that kill it. And it's just a tough card. Get Excited is by far, without being close, my least favorite card in this deck. I hate this card. I many times was trying to find ways to replace it. I don't think there is a way to replace it. It's just too valuable being able to do three to the face at the end to be able to put it on the stack just right. The problem is the burn deck doesn't have a lot of excess cards and you often will need exactly all of your cards and you'll often be in a spot where this card is not the right card, especially if you have two, it is a nightmare. You basically have to use one to discard the other one. What it does do is set up some really interesting things where at, when you get to the end of the game, a precious pet, by playing a precious pet to the board, you get nothing, right? Like, oh, maybe in some miraculous world their board clears and you get two through. No, that's never going to happen. Don't think like that. What you need to be thinking instead is this worthless card needs to stay in my hand in case I draw and I get excited at the end and I need a card to discard. Um, and so you really, as you, as you start moving into the mid game, these are the things you need to start thinking about is like, this card is so bad, how do I minimize its badness? It's by not playing things to the board that I might otherwise want to. Uh, Noxious Fervor is amazing. Uh, being able to, the three self damage will often win a game. So the, the deck you're gonna have the most trouble with is Shadow Isles because it has tons of ways to gain health. But most of the ways it gains health is by damaging your guys. And there is nothing more powerful than when they play the card that does three damage to one of your guys and drains it to be able to go, oh, that's cool. I will respond by playing Noxious Fervor, killing the guy you were going to drain and doing three to you, netting me six. Um, so that's an incredibly powerful way to use this card. And as when you're at the bottom of the ladder, you can use it super aggressively. And then as you move up, you really need to start adjusting how you play the card and realizing that you are playing it in reaction normally rather than aggressively against any deck that has healing because that, that's one of the ways you're going to prevent the healing. This dude, the used cast salesman, is bananas. Two automatic damage from the cast. Yes, you both get hurt. You don't care. You just want to damage them. And then you have three blockers on the turn um, when you play this. So the best case scenario is like Demacia... 
on turn two, they don't have a great board. So on turn three, they want to play the bear. They play the bear. Now they have three guys on board, and they're thinking, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to squeak it out before Burn can get going. And then you drop this guy, block their guys. Their whole turn three is basically didn't happen. And now you're probably going to win because that's all you needed was that little bit of stall to be able to finish it out. Static Shock is another card that just doesn't feel quite good enough. Um, now, there's definitely moments where you're like, yeah, yep, Static Shock. That's why it's in the deck. But I just feel like there's probably not enough. It's another card that if there was a bigger card pool, I don't think it would be in there. Uh, it can be strong doing uh, a damage to a couple guys, especially like in the burn mirror, getting a draw and wiping out two of their guys. Um, oftentimes you're going to use it to like clear out one of the blockers, do one to the face, draw one. That can be strong. And then decimate is it's really hard to deal with. Like in, unless they're playing... Ionia and they have Deny, you're doing four. By the way, be very careful of this. There is no worse feeling for the burn deck than having this get denied. If this gets denied, you've probably lost because it took your whole turn to play it. All right, some just general tips. Um, I find more often than not, if my opponent either has an empty board or I can get two attackers through, I'm almost always going to open attack. It is very rare when I try to keep populating the board and then attacking, because more likely than not, they are playing bigger things than me. So my theory is like on turn one, if I am not the attacker, I'll play a guy. And then on turn two, I probably will play a guy depending on the matchup. But like if it's, if I'm the attacker on one and on one, I play a guy. And then on their turn, I play a guy on two. On turn three, I'm probably just attacking because my theory is on turn three, I'm probably looking at something like a demolitionist and I would rather just push the damage through before they play like their giant bear and then I respond with the demolitionist and then I'm able to push through. So I'll show you a game to kind of give you a sense of that. But the bottom line is you're doing damage to face. You're very rarely handling their creatures with spells you can block that's fine you want to block with stuff that is not giving you damage like you would never block with a boom crew unless you have to um you're not going to block with the two one that does damage those are things you don't want to block with uh and you want to just basically push damage and rank up so let's see what we get well we're going to play one game here we'll see do we get the 50 percent where we auto win the 10 percent where we auto lose or the middle ground so this feels like an auto win matchup. Yes, this is kind of a scary good deck. It's pretty quick, but it's not quicker than us. So because we have first, we absolutely have to have a one drop. I'm kind of tempted even to drop the Grenadier or the Grenadier. I'm not going to. I'm going to assume they'll hit a one drop with four cards. I was wrong. I may lose now. Like this is... This went from being a decent hand to a pretty garbagey hand. Um, because we didn't hit the one drop, we have way too many spells. It's one of the interesting things about the burn. <laughs> that was just cruel. It's one of the interesting things about the burn deck, though. Is it's kind of like, you mm, either get it or or you don't. Um, it has, okay. So we can't block. I'm not going to just get excited. Uh, we will... We don't have any ways to proc her, but we can play her, and then we get to swing in and they can't block. So we will just be able to open with an attack if they don't do anything, and they didn't. Uh, probably because they're planning to play like Fiora plus Trick here or something. And so this is where it's really interesting. I said I normally don't play cards here and then attack, and this is why. Like I could go Boom Crew and Rear Guard, and that's really powerful. But if they play Fiora here, they just eat her. And I don't really get anything anyway. It, this this is a spot where I'm a little tempting. The Boom Crew is so good. He's worth two damage on his own that I think it is worth playing because... Oh, wow. Okay. That's super me. interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little surprised they didn't play a three drop there. They have a very bad hand if they couldn't play a three drop. They may just be... 
waiting on their three drop. But that's that's kind of bizarro. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. All right. It's got the standalone. I mean, that's a great card, but we pushed a lot of damage here. Like. A lot of damage. They're already at 14. And this is when I start doing math. So, they're, so this is two more. So that's four. That's eight. That's 11. That's 14. We actually have lethal in hand now. So now it's just a question of figuring out how do we make sure we get all this damage. Because while they don't have as many direct removal spells, they do have a lot of stuff like um, the two cost trick where they can make it challenging for us. And they also have Deny for something like Decimate. So do we play Decimate here, um, or do we do something like play this guy so we can at least block something and still do the two damage and not take a million damage here? I think that's what we're going to do, because we can play him and the Boom Crew, then we open with the attack, and yes, we lose both Boom Crews, but it's okay. We already have Lethal. But we're not blocking with the Boom Crew. Try me. Um, are we blocking with him, or are we just going to block that guy? We're not going to block that, actually. We're going to let that one go. I'm going to play the Boom Crew. And we're opening with a lot of damage next turn. I suppose. Yeah, I think we're going to eat the 4-2. The reason being because now we push through more damage. If we had eaten him, they'd still have three blockers. Now they only have two. And yes, it's only one more damage, but... One more damage is one more damage when we're playing with the burn deck. Okay, we're not going to play the Disciple here. We're going to open. So if we play the Disciple here, they've got the third blocker. They just eat all our guys. We gain nothing by playing that Disciple. You'll go no farther. Now this is pretty good for us. It really depends on what they do. Um, if they get under four mana, I'm just going to play the deny and be pretty happy about that. And probably win the game. Okay, so that's big. So now we get to play Decimate. They're at two only. We have two cards that beat them. They really, they could have the heal, and so that's really important to remember that we don't want to like go all in thinking we have the win when we do something like get excited, because they could play the heal spell, and, and most likely they will. Um, what I'm hoping they do is they play a blocking trick, or the, oh, I can't even remember the name of the card, the two cost combat trick to try to bring in somebody. All right, so we're fine with this. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to trick. And then when they do, that's when we can respond with Noxian Fervor. And then if they respond with something, then we can play Get Excited. That's great for us. Uh, let's see. We can't play everything we would want to play, which is play this to, to sort of threaten something. And then we can't play both of them. They're down to seven, so if they go trick... Down to four. I think we pass here. I don't think they can afford to pass. Like, they have to attack. They're at three. Like, that's not an option they have. Is just to be like, that's cool. Let's see what they do. I'll pass and make them waste all that mana. Like, I don't think that's a possibility for them. That's even better. Now they're down to exactly four. We're going to pass again. And let's see if they I trick. If they trick, down. they lose. Try me. I'm guessing they're going to trick here to kill the Boom Crew. Maybe not. They could even put a repost on one of these guys for the win. Yeah. So, oh, will we not have a chance to respond to that? Yes, okay. <laughs> for a second there, I was like, wait, what? All right, yeah, so we win... Um, and we win with two cards, right? So we could have tried to do that right away, but if it, they had had the twin combat card, they could have killed this guy. They could have played the uh, heal spell. They could have done a lot of things. So instead, we waited, we pulled, we pulled everything, and then we responded with our kills. So 
that's sort of the trick of how to play the deck well. It's not simply doing the math and then just blah, vomiting out all the damage. You really do have to be thoughtful about it, right? So we did the math early and we were like, ooh, we've got the 14. We have the win, but how do we make sure we get the win? How do we make sure we wait on the decimate until they can't play deny for four? How do we make sure they commit enough so that the noxious fervor can't be responded to by other stuff? So that's where that's the skill is in the deck. Um, there's not as much skill in drawing the 14 you need to kill them. And I think that's where this deck kind of gets a rap of like, anyone can play the deck, be terrible, and do fine. I don't agree with that. Um, I do think you can be bad and still eke out like a 51% win rate and probably climb to diamond if you have time to play a million games. But I think if you put some time into the deck, it's not too hard to figure out these intricacies I was talking about and use those then to get like a 56% win rate. And that makes it a lot easier to climb and it's fast. So I um, played this deck a fair amount. I did play it from platinum to diamond. I personally, it's interesting because I really enjoy the deck in sort of small bursts. I like the challenge of trying to like outmaneuver my Shadows Isles opponent as they've got their their drain spells and how do I line everything up and that can be fun. After a while though, because it is so linear where it's like you play the one drop, play the two drop, play the, actually not usually play the three drop. Um, it can be a little dulling, but it is a way to get to diamonds. So if you're out there and you've been thinking, ah, I can't climb anymore, just fire up the burn deck and uh, you'll be fine. And really, pretty much anyone can get the diamond that they want. I won't be using it to get to master, so I won't have a follow-up video. Anyone can get to masters. And I also have a feeling that it's a lot harder to sequence the plays against diamond players than it is against lower level players. Although we saw there, we were able to sort of bait them into it, but they did think that they had the lethal and they thought that this was their moment to push in. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're playing Runeterra. I'd love to hear from you what decks you're playing out there. I'll see you next time.